ExxonMobil out with a corporate update yesterday. Uh, some significant news lifted its buyback target to $20 billion, for example, forecasting higher production for uh, next year. This, of course, is the price of oils. Rebounded ever so slightly a bit, fell below 70 bucks a barrel just the other day. For more, I am joined right here by Darren Woods, ExxonMobil's chairman and CEO. It's good to see you again. Good to see you too, uh, David. And in person. Uh, I want to get, to, obviously, to a lot of the news from yesterday, but just curious. I mean, oil has come down significantly over, I don't know, the last month, six weeks. Any thoughts as to what the reasons are behind that move down? I think, you know, frankly, we don't get too focused on the short-term dynamics in the marketplace. We tend to look more longer-term at the fundamentals, and I'd say, over that longer term, generally speaking, you know, it's a depletion business. We see every barrel of oil that the world produces is one less barrel available. And so that depletion business requires constant reinvestment to maintain, if not grow, the supply. And so we tend to look at that longer term. And I'd say investment into that, uh, replacing that depletion is on the light side. It has been historically, continues to be on the light side. So our view is over the longer it's in medium term, the market's going to remain fairly tight. Yeah, you think so? It I will think so, yeah. remain fairly tight. Now, where, where are we? Around 13.2 million barrels a day from yeah, the U.S.? something like that, right. Yeah, yeah. not bad, right? No, I mean, it's, it's, when, it's you, when you hear that number, what, what comes into mind? We should be doing more. We've done a lot over these last few years. What is it? I think it speaks to the resiliency of the unconventional business, the, uh, the innovation that we see there. You, you know, there's actually less rigs now, uh, if you go back in time, compare similar levels of production less rigs delivering more production, which just speaks to the innovation and the creativity of the people who are in the Permian producing. And uh, my view is we're going to kind of continue to see good activity in the unconventional space. Uh, I suspect the growth will slow down, but we'll continue to see some level of growth coming out of the unconventional, which is frankly good for the world and, and good for the U.S. And, and the U.S. energy security. Yeah. Uh, and the Pioneer deal going to help you actually increase production? Yeah, so what we're doing in Pioneer is we've put a lot of emphasis on what ExxonMobil as a large multinational company, how we can bring the capabilities and skills that we've developed all around the world to bear in this unique uh, U.S. resource. And frankly, have developed an approach, uh, technology, uh, a way of uh, recovering that resource that gives us a big advantage. So we're taking what uh, Pioneer has to offer, which is very capable people and you know the best acreage in the Permian, combining that with our development approach and technology. We'll produce more oil at a lower cost, more environmentally uh, efficient. We're going to bring forward their 2050 net zero ambition to a 2035 net zero plan. Uh, so we'll bring, make it a little So bit ambition up. to plan 15 years earlier. Ambition to plan 15 years earlier. We're, we've got a 2030 net zero plan for our own existing Permian production. I've been there, obviously, spent time that? with a lot of we're, your people down there. Yeah, and we're on track for that. So I think, you know, we're, we're working. We'll bring that forward if we can, if we find the opportunity. So lower emissions, less environmental footprint, uh, more production at a lower cost, good for the economy. And frankly, it helps uh, U.S. energy security. So I think there's a lot to like about that. And it generates additional value that neither Pioneer or ourselves could do without this combination. So good for shareholders. So I think any lens you want to look at that deal, it's a win-win-win. You think it's a win-win-win? Uh, since I'm on the subject of it, and obviously a lot to cover here, though, you did get a second request for information from the antitrust authorities. Not a big surprise. No. Any concerns on your part, though, on that front? No, I think we're going to try to respond as quickly as we can to the information to look. We think it's reasonable to, to take a look at that. It's got a lot of headlines. It's large when you look at the transaction in and of itself, but in the context of the bigger market, it's a very small transaction. Our production will be less than 5% of U.S. total production. Even if you focus in on what's coming coming out of the Permian, we're less than 15% of production. And of course, on the global stage, which this market, as you know, is very liquid, uh, very transparent, you know, we're less than 3% of production. So I don't think there's any angle that you can look at this potential combination and find any concern, uh, concerns about uh, competition. Yeah, and when you talk about a technology upgrade in a sense, my word, not yours, but I mean, do the Pioneer guys say, hey, wait a second, we're as, 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 uh, we're as advanced as anyone in terms of getting getting the stuff out of the ground. What are you talking about? Well, I think, and, and they are, it's a great organization. They've got great people, very capable. So I, I, I would agree with that sentiment. They don't have the same resources that ExxonMobil has. They don't have a standalone technology organization that's worked for the last five years to try to improve the recovery of that resources. So it's it's not a it's not necessarily an issue about the quality of the people or their capability, it's the resources they have available. Same with the environmental reduction. They've been very focused on an environmentally responsible production, but they don't have the same resources that ExxonMobil can bring to bear. And so I think frankly that's a, a broader theme for this whole 
uh, challenge the world faces with respect to reducing emissions. It, it's going to take scale. It's going to take large companies with the kind of resources required to make significant progress there. We have a key role to play there. We're going to do that in this unconventional space, but we're doing it in a lot of other places as well.